Happy New Year to you and yours. I uh, want to bring you some great news about BDNF and increased neuroplasticity. Yet another thing that increases um, brain growth in the hippocampus, mind you. So just came across this I wanted to share with you. Um, basically, there was a study in 2013 done on mice, of course. Remember, you can't always correlate entirely what happens to mice as what happens to humans. I mean, I did read Ralph S. Mouse, and he was my hero when I was probably in second or third grade. I wanted to have a ping pong as my helmet to ride my motorcycle and be, you know, as cool as Ralph S. Mouse. But, alas, I am human. So, not everything correlates, but in this study, basically, what, what did they do? They exposed mice to various kinds of stimulus, specifically noise stimulus. So, all of them had kind of the baseline of the lab, right, with the animal facility sounds. Um, and then one group got exposed to white noise, one group got exposed to the sound pup call sounds, which I can only imagine are fairly natural to other in the mice in the mice realm. Um, and then one group got exposed to silence. A fourth group got exposed to piano music, specifically Mozart, which I'm imagining is not so mice-like. Anyways, um, what they found was that all forms of stimulation, with the exception of the white noise, increased precursor cell proliferation in the hippocampus, which the cells got then got flagged so that as they produced further down the line, we could figure out what which ones continue to increase the proliferation and continue to proliferate. And lo and behold, at the seven day mark, the only form of stimulus that continued to proliferate cells was silence. Isn't that freaking amazing? <laughs> silence. It's pretty simple, guys. Here we have all these natural things we can do, and one of them is silence. And where can you experience silence great best? Probably in nature. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, over the holiday, I didn't have my kids, so what does one do when one is approaching an awkward holiday sans kids? Well, you do something totally different. <laughs> so I decided to hike down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And there's actually a place, the only place you can stay below the rim is called Phantom Ranch. Somehow I had the good fortune of booking such a place. Um, so on Christmas Eve day, I decided to set out down the trail. It's seven miles down if you go down south, Kaibab, which is the name of the trail on the south rim. And then typically people come up Bright Angel, which is 11 miles. So it's nice if you can have an overnight, you know, get a hot meal, head back up the trail. I got two nights, so then it was awesome. So... Uh, my experience with silence. I'm starting off on the trail on the 24th, so I'm I'm guessing that's not not the most happening day at the Grand Canyon. Though surprisingly, there were a lot of people there. Um, but a storm is additionally blowing in. They're supposed to get six to eight inches of snow, um, and I'm starting down the trail a little late because I, I you know I've done it before. I'm a little familiar. I'm thinking ah, I'm fine, right? Um, note to self. Kaibab, in the event that you experience high winds, specifically high, huge gusts of winds, while hiking across a spine in the Grand Canyon, it can be a little nerve-wracking. And the silence, in this case, was the absence of all, there were hardly any people. So Jen's hiking alone on the spine, hoping not to fall into the Grand Canyon on Christmas Eve day. It was a great experience. I love to tell about it. Um, I did not get blown off, in case you were wondering the end of the story. Um, but I was struck by how few people were on the trail, and also the silence of the canyon itself. I mean, you get down to the bottom, and there are much fewer people. In fact, it's a perfect filter for if you want to meet the coolest people 
on the planet. And you go to a meal at Phantom Ranch where people have been camping and some of them staying, you know, their cabins you can stay in. And you all show up for this family style meal and sit and talk to people that are literally from around the world. The kind of person who does this that you meet, they're, they have a story to tell. And it's fun to just listen to people's stories and share your own. So, you know, people from all over the planet sharing a meal together and then and it's it really is the effect of the canyon kind of seeps into everybody so you have this this reverence for this sacred space and the silence of it all and then you come up out of the canyon <laughs> to be confronted at the top of bright angel trail with eight tourist buses that have just pulled up and the top of the canyon bright angel lodge and various ascending other places are mobbed and it's a cacophony of noise <laughs> I wanted to turn around and just walk back down to the canyon because <laughs> it was striking this time how the the difference between my experience of these intermittent periods of silence in the canyon and the cacophony of noise at the top with people kind of back into their their regular routine you know the the canyon takes you out of your own routine you get to be in a place that is quite remote i mean but they do have <laughs> they've got a good setup there you can get a hot meal you can have a bunk um you don't have to pack in a sleeping bag and you know, so it's this, it's a nice experience that you can have down there, but yet scamper around and experience the canyon. And, um, and it, this is a, the site of pilgrimage for many Native American tribes. Um, you know, I'm pretty, I think the Navajo actually, Phantom Ranch, the location of Phantom Ranch itself is a sacred site. Um, one of the most sacred in the canyon according to the Navajo, and then there are various, you know, Havasupai, have Mooney Falls, and there, there are all these different places in the canyon that are, that are amazing. And it's the silence that speaks to you, and as it turns out with this research, it's the silence that heals you and increases the proliferation of your cells. Your BDNF, likely, that's probably the mechanism. It didn't say that directly in the study, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Um, based on what we know. And um, how cool is that? So now you have an excuse to take your own trip down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and experience some silence. Or go on silent retreat. You know, there are plenty of different organizations that will do such a thing. You can do your own. You know, just take a break from the noise that is the culture that we live in. Uh, it can be healing in many ways. Thanks for tuning in. Audio.